focus and fearless. Here's everything you need to know this rush hour of February 20, Thursday. I am Royce Snack. Opening today's rush with the over 500 Filipinos who disembarked from the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan after their 14-day quarantine aboard the vessel. They are now waiting or awaiting their repatriation and are set for another two-week quarantine upon arrival in, here in the Philippines. JC Cosico has the report. Passengers of the Diamond Princess cruise ship docked in Yokohama, Japan, have begun to disembark following the completion of their 14-day quarantine period. Japanese nationals were brought to nearby terminals, while other nationalities like Americans were repatriated by their respective governments. The Philippines, however, is still in coordination with the Japanese government and the ship's handler Carnival Cruises regarding the repatriation of over 500 Filipinos on the ship, mostly crew members. Yeah, I use na testing will be done, assessment will be done, and hopefully, uh, may ayos na po natin ang repatriation in the coming days. The health department notes only those who are asymptomatic or those not showing any symptoms of COVID-19 after testing negative for the virus will be allowed to go home. They are still subject to a 14-day quarantine period as soon as they arrive in the country. The agency though has chosen not to disclose yet the quarantine facility for the repatriates. Gusto malang muna namin ma-coordinate ng maayos sa ating local governments and the communities no? uh, nakasama natin doon. 41 Filipino crew members of Diamond Princess have tested positive for the virus so far. They are now confined in a medical facility in Tokyo. Hindi lang po natin talaga mabibilisan ang mga ganitong proseso dahil unang-una, hindi naman ho biro yung numero, no? Here in the Philippines, the number of patients under investigation due to COVID-19 has risen to over 500. Meanwhile, the quarantine period for Filipino workers from Hubei, China is set to end on Saturday, with most of them already asymptomatic. Phil Health, for its part, has provided a 14,000 peso assistance to those who had to undergo quarantine. For News 5, JC Cosico, we are One News. Hong Kong has confirmed its second death from COVID-19. The casualty involves a 70-year-old man who was one of the 62 confirmed cases in the self-administered state. The man also had an underlying illness. Meanwhile, Hong Kong authorities are now also bent on bringing home hundreds of its residents from the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan. This brings the death toll from the virus outbreak to 2014. While the total number of those infected has risen to over 75,000 people as of this morning, more people are more people are also getting better with over 15,000 recovered patients recorded worldwide. Back home, the health department recorded 12 more people suspected of having the coronavirus disease, but only 135 people are still confined in different hospitals with over 400 PUIs already sent home. The travel the travel ban to and from Hong Kong and Macau may have been partially lifted, but booking a flight remains to be a challenge. As of this morning, there are only three flights bound for Hong Kong in the country, while there is still no flight going to Macau. Local flight carriers Cebu Pacific, Philippine Airlines and Air Asia are still unable to mount flights to the said areas. The foreign carriers, uh, sila pa lang din muna, ang uh, nagsisilbi na tumatawid sa ating mga pasahero, both from uh, Hong Kong and Macau. Amid concerns over the COVID-19 outbreak, Catholic Church leaders say religious activity should push through. The Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines says the annual Ash Wednesday, which marks the start of the Lenten season, will proceed on February 26. The group suggested the sprinkling of ash on mask goers' foreheads instead of the traditional wiping as precaution against the spread of the viral disease. Wala namang need para isuspend mo yan. Ano? At magpapatuloy yung mga activity natin para sa Ash Wednesday. May misa, may position ng ashes. Pero sa ibang diocese, meron silang mga instructions ano, on how to do the imposition of ashes. 
Terrible traffic situation welcomes motorists in Metro Manila's southern portion. Over in EDSA, it's the same story which can potentially be worsened by the proposal for a nationwide mall sale for tourism. Marian Enriquez has the report. Netizens were outraged over the heavy traffic along Aslex and Alabang on Tuesday. Some blasted a two-hour travel time from C5 Tollgate to Sukat, which normally only takes 45 minutes. The culprit for the jam, the construction of the Skyway extension. Several lanes were closed since construction commenced on February 16, including the Alabang Zapote Road ramp, which is only open from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. That's why I'm basking heavy vehicles, bawal kasi hindi kasi sa ramp. Okay, so ngayon, kaya nag-heavy traffic talaga ng todo dyan kasi nga nagkabago na scheme, nagsala na kalsada. The project is expected to be completed in two to three months. Elsewhere in Manila, like in EDSA, congestion shows no signs of easing. It now takes an hour and a half to traverse the four-kilometer stretch from Magallanes to Guadalupe. Pagkalagpas niyan, medyo tatakbo ng konting-konti, magta-traffic na naman yung paraid sa kalayaan. After niyan, yung Guadalupe na, yung pababa dyan, going to JP Rizal, ano? grabe na ng traffic siya, lalo niya kasi maliit yung daan dyan. The MMDA points to other factors, such as insufficient roads, poor discipline among motorists, and a spike in the number of cars. Every day, may nadadagdag na 800 to 1,000 new vehicles, and sir, every day, may nadadagdag. Hindi naman nadadagdagan yung kalsada natin. Vehicle volume in EDSA now reaches 400,000 daily, according to the MMDA, way above its 280,000 vehicle capacity. According to a traffic engineer, should the new railways be completed, the government can implement a road pricing policy requiring private car users to pay for road usage. Provide uh, private car users with a viable alternative then you, then you can implement yung uh, uh, policy against the use of private cars. Despite potentially worsening traffic jams, MMDA supports the Tourism Department's plan for a nationwide shopping mall sale to boost domestic tourism in the face of the COVID-19 scare. For News 5, Marian Enriquez, we are One News. And here are the biggest stories from the dailies. Suspended Bucor legal officer Frederick Santos was ambushed just 100 meters away from the New Bilibid prison on Wednesday. Filipino Star Ngayon reports that Santos was just about to pick up his daughter from school when two men appeared and shot him down. Santos was one of the 24 or 27 rather Bucor officials involved in the release of heinous crimes victims or convicts under the GCTA law. As of the moment, the PNP has yet to identify the suspects and possible motive for the crime. They have recovered the CCTV at tinitingnan nila kung may maitulong po yun. Sa ngayon, we are still uh, have no, no person of interest regarding sa incident. And I think uh, ang chief of police natin, based on his report, he had coordinated with the BU Corps and uh, we are, would like this to, to ask the BU Corps for a joint investigation. Kasi sa ngayon, uh, blank wall pa. No? So, titignan lang namin kung anong, ano ang mga development. Kasi sa ngayon, naghihintay din kami ng tulong ng mga witness kung makapagbigay uh, ng descriptions at saka ng, ng, ng uh, idea kung sino yung mga suspect. At the height of bribery issues at the Bureau of Immigration, former presidential aide, and now Senator Bongo relayed warnings from the president. In a report by Pangmasa, Gol says immigration officials who are proven to be involved in the Pastilla scheme will be forced to eat the cash used to bribe them. So, sabi ni Paolo, mahilig ka sa, mahilig ka sa pera? Kung mahilig ka sa pera, ngayon, kainin mo yung pera. Ipinahin ka ng buo. Sir, pag ang problema, hindi ko lang alam, yung tatlong daan na yun, pag, uh, pag, pag bawas niya, paglabas na, bariya na. And this from the Philippine Star. The University of the Philippines is now the 70th best university among emerging economies in the world. That's according to the latest rankings released by London-based Times Higher Education. 
UP continued to soar in the rankings, jumping 17 spots from last year. Meanwhile, De La Salle University ranked within the 351 to 400 place, down from last year's 251 to 300 range. While many look forward to the partial operations of the MRT-7 extension project, the Quezon City government has pushed for its temporary suspension. The reason? They were not informed of the changes in station design plans that may apparently cover the QC circle. Shaila Francisco has the story. MRT-7, which shortens travel time between Manila and Bulacan to just 30 to 40 minutes, was set to be partially operational by next year. But it just hit a roadblock. The Quezon City local government has suspended the railways above ground construction over parts of the Quezon Memorial Circle. Mayor Joy Belmonte issued a temporary cease and desist order after discovering last week that the station will now be a three-story building with a floor area five times larger than the agreed plan. The local government only approved a one-story station covering almost 2,500 square meters. The way the structure looks to me is, is that of a commercial structure. Um, and I think commercial structures have no place in a green space. The station may also cover the Quezon Memorial Shrine. It is the burial site of our founding father, President Manuel Luis Quezon. Um, tingin ko dapat respetuhin yung pylon. Uh, dapat hindi mangyari sa Quezon City Circle at sa pylon yung nangyari sa uh, Manila uh, through the Torre de Manila issue. But the Transportation Department explained that the plan was altered to accommodate the increase in riders. 2008 pa nung napirmahan at naaprubahan. So noong 2008, yung expected natin na ridership at gagamit ng MRT-7 is very different doon sa updated natin ng mga ridership forecast na tinatawag. Ayaw naman natin na magtayo ng isang uh, linya na alam natin kulang yung kapasidad. Some commuters now worry that a cease and desist order may delay operations. Bakit ngayon pa lang niya hininto? Uh, ganun baka hindi ka transparent yung plans to, uh, sa simula pa lang. Belmonte said the plan can still be revised since the above-board construction hasn't started yet. The order only covers the ground floor construction and will not affect the underground area where railways are constructed. The Transportation Department also assured that the order won't affect the MRT-7's construction. Private concessioner San Miguel Corporation is open to review the designs with a proposal to be presented on February 28. Shaila Francisco, we are One News. Let's fast break now to Sports Rush. First-timers highlighted the new Gila squad that will play against Indonesia in the FIBA Asia Cup 2021 qualifiers on Sunday. These include rising stars Isaac Go, Matt Nieto, Juan Gomez de Liano, Dwight Ramos, and Thirdy Ravenna. That's on top of Phoenix Rose's Justin Chua and Alaska's Abu Trapper. Rounding up the lineup are mainstays Roger Pogoy, CJ Perez, Boy Eram and team captain Kiefer Ravenna. The 12-man team was unveiled by the Samahang Basketball ng Pilipinas on Wednesday. Gila's coach Mark Dikel revealed that this was not an easy team to pick. But during the last two days of practice, he was able to figure things out. We felt that the PBA players that we picked gave us a really, really good base to build off. And then the other uh, four or five, I believe it is, younger players can complement them. So. That was the decision that was made. Um, that's why we made it. Uh, we feel this will give us the best chance in this window to do well. With the addition of five new players, the new Gila's team can't help but feel a little pressure to bring home the victory for glory and country. Dati kasi parang uh, naglalaro ka lang eh. Kasi yung pressure andun sa mga veterans. Ngayon naman, ang uh, nasa amin na lahat, kami Kiefer, kami Troy, so... Ano, kakayanin na lang siguro. Siyempre, matututo pa rin ako sa, sa mga matatanda, kagaya nila Kiefer, yung mga matatandang nasa gilas na kung ano yung ginawa ko ng World Cup, uh, dep defensa, pensa, energy, ganun ako. Oh, yun na yung gagawin ko. Masaya siya, pero at the same time, medyo malaking responsibility yun kasi yung kapatid ko para na rin siyang coach. So, um, a big responsibility for not just me, but for everyone to do their part to make sure that we represent the country the best of our abilities. 
Here are the stories to watch out for later today. The Senate Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations and Gender Equality will be conducting its third hearing on the alleged sex trafficking link to Pogos. President Duterte will be leading the joint graduation ceremonies of public safety officers in Davao City. And the Japanese Embassy in the Philippines will be hosting the National Day Reception in celebration of the birthday of Emperor Naruhito. And that's how the day is shaping up to be. Join us again next time for another round of Rush. For Riza Diaz, I am Royce Snagit. We are One News.